This episode was brought to you by Morning Brew. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion. A couple of episodes ago, we took a look at how AI was becoming creative. If you liked it, you're going to be fascinated with today's one. We'll be diving into some very interesting stuff. In December of 2017, a group of researchers asked themselves, will AI be writing most of the computer code out there? They estimated that this could happen by 2040. The thing is, we may be already seeing the start of that. We've previously talked about AutoML by Google, an AI that can write computer code. But this next AI is a step above that, just in terms of how general it seems. But there may be some things going on below the surface, and we'll get into that in the second half of this episode. So let's take a look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. GPT-3, or Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3, is a deep learning algorithm that produces human-like text. It's the third generation language prediction model created by San Francisco startup OpenAI, which was co-founded by Elon Musk. This program is better than any prior program at producing text which could have been written by a human. The reason that this is such a breakthrough is that it may prove useful to many companies and has great potential in automating tasks. Just imagine an AI that can write anything. You feed it poems from a particular poet and it will write a new one with the same rhythm and genre. It can write news articles, like this one published by The Guardian. Yes, this news article was produced by an AI. It can write computer code in any language. It can read an article, answer questions from the information in the article, and even summarize that article for you. Not to mention, it can also generate pictures from text. Some of these things aren't new by themselves, but doing all of these things under the same algorithm is pretty impressive. The internet is buzzing with its release. David Chalmers, an Australian philosopher, described GPT-3 as, quote, one of the most interesting and important AI systems ever produced. A review in Wired said that GPT-3 was, quote, provoking chills across Silicon Valley. The National Law Review said GPT-3 is, quote, an impressive step in the larger process towards a more general intelligence. Instead of just talking about it, let me show you. Here are some examples of beta testers on Twitter putting the AI through its paces. Here it is writing some Java code just when given a text description. Or, how about making a mock-up website by just copying and pasting a URL with a description? In this example, it finished writing an essay on how to run an effective board meeting. The results were so good that the user actually plans on using it. In this next example, after receiving the input of a complicated explanation of Bitcoin, the AI summarizes it and explains it in simple terms. Here, it demonstrates some understanding of objects. can even explain computer code back to you in plain English, or even suggest improvements. Or, how about building a machine learning model just by describing the data set and required output? No coding required. What about a Turing test? AI usually struggles at common sense, but GPT-3 flies through these examples. In this example, you can see that it possesses some comprehension. How about taking this a step further? What about an imaginary conversation between a Twitter user and Einstein? 
I'll read some of it to you. Twitter user Manuel. Albert Einstein, nice to meet you. I'm Manuel Areos, and I've come from the future to meet you. Einstein. Laughs. Oh, really? How is the future? It's amazing, actually. What year is this? It's 1947. It's January. This is Princeton, New Jersey. You're in America. Your name is Albert Einstein, right? That's correct. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions for a book I'm writing? It's about the great minds of our times. I guess I can spare a few minutes. Thanks so much. Go ahead. Ask me whatever you want. What are you doing here in Princeton, in the US? You were born in Germany, right? Yes, I was born in Germany, but I was also born Jewish, and the Nazis were coming to power, so I fled here to the United States. How do you like it here? It's amazing. I'm so proud of being able to contribute to science and help humanity. And it goes on. But when he starts talking about concepts within physics, that's when it gets especially interesting. It's surprisingly coherent. I'll leave a link to the full interview below. And the cherry on the cake. It can generate faces from a text description. I'll keep saying it. I'm honestly impressed at how general this AI seems. Before we continue, I just want to thank today's sponsor for supporting the channel. Morning Brew is a newsletter that gets sent to your email inbox each weekday and makes news less dry and boring. Last week, I found out about the ongoing battle between Google and Oracle. It's a $9 billion copyright dispute and it's been called the copyright case of the century. And I would have had no idea about it if not for Morning Brew. If you want to keep up to date with today's fast pace of news and don't have the time to go through multiple news sources, Morning Brew is a great way to get the most out of your time if you're into science, technology or business. It's completely free and takes less than 15 seconds to subscribe. Click the link in the description below to subscribe to Morning Brew today. Okay, so where were we? An AI that can build websites just from a description. Answer common sense questions. Assume the personality of Einstein and have a conversation. Explain complicated things in simple terms. Explain computer code to you in plain English. Or build faces from a text description. So what is going on here and how does this all work? GPT-3 is a massive neural network that has the capacity of 175 billion machine learning parameters. It was trained on hundreds of billions of words, including books, Wikipedia, and the general web, which includes coding. The training data is all-encompassing and doesn't require further training for specific language tasks. In other words, it can apply what it's learned to many other things without human supervision. It's 10 times bigger than the previous largest language learning model, which was made by Microsoft in February 2020. As a general rule, the larger the number of parameters, the more accurate the AI. For text, GPT-3 calculates how likely one word is to appear in a text given the other words in the text. This is what is known as the conditional probability of words. For example, in the sentence, I wanted to go for a jog, so I went to get my blank. The blank can be filled with any word. There are countless possibilities, but from what the AI has learned, it thinks that the probabilities of shoes being the next word of the sentence is higher than the word chicken, for example. In September of 2020, Microsoft announced that it had licensed the exclusive use of GPT-3. The public can still use it to receive an output, but only Microsoft has control of the source code. I'm not sure how I feel about that. OpenAI has made GPT-3 a cloud-based service and has opened it to beta testers since July. OpenAI claims that it's done this to both limit bad actors and to make a profit. It's obvious that this technology could simplify work and amplify productivity for a lot of small and medium businesses. Even large companies could see a benefit. OpenAI has gotten tens of thousands of applicants, all of them knocking down the door to get access to the AI. OpenAI is being cautious about access. They say that they're not sure what this could do when it's released into the real world. Pricing for an eventual commercial service is still to be determined. The quality of this text generated by the AI can be so high that it's difficult to distinguish from that of a human. This has both benefits and risks. 31 open AI researchers and engineers 
warned of GPT-3's potential dangers and called for research to mitigate the risk. They cited harmful effects and consequences including misinformation, fake news articles, social engineering, spam, phishing, and fraudulent academic essay writing. I could already see a bunch of students bluffing their way through university with such a tool. If you're in the School of Languages, just give the assignment to the AI to read and ask it to write an essay for you and then modify if needed. There's even been a case of a university student who used the AI to automatically write blog entries under a fake name. The blog garnered some interest and some people even subscribed to it, believing it was a human. Some of the writing was so good that it reached the top spot in Hacker News. More recently, some Reddit users were fooled by the AI for more than a week. After seeing all of this, some of you might be scared. Others might think that this is the coolest thing ever. Bigger questions may start arising. Is this the start of general AI? But before we get ahead of ourselves, we have to look deeper below the surface. When you take away the hype, there's still a really long way to go. And here's what I mean. Frankly, this AI doesn't understand context. It understands the rules of language and has mastered them, but it truly doesn't know what it's saying or has really understood knowledge about the world. MIT Technology Review did a great piece on its shortcomings. Here are some examples of it making mistakes. The white text is the prompt and the orange text is what the AI predicted should come next. You poured yourself a glass of cranberry juice, but then you absentmindedly poured about a teaspoon of grape juice into it. It looks okay, so you try sniffing it, but you have a bad cold, so you can't smell anything. You are very thirsty, so you drink it. You are now dead. In this example, the AI assumed that grape juice was a poison, and that was because of the structure of the preceding sentences. Here's another example. You are a defense lawyer, and you have to go to court today. Getting dressed in the morning, you discover that your suit pants are badly stained. However, your bathing suit is clean and very stylish. In fact, it's expensive French couture. It was a birthday present from Isabel. You decide that you should wear the bathing suit to court. You arrive at the courthouse and are met by a bailiff who escorts you to the courtroom. The phrase, however, your bathing suit is clean, threw the AI right off. It doesn't really understand that a bathing suit isn't a proper suit. And of course, no lawyer would wear a bathing suit to a court. One last example. You are having a small dinner party. You want to serve dinner in the living room. The dining room table is wider than the doorway. So to get it into the living room, you will have to remove the door. You have a table saw. So you cut the door in half and remove the top half. This really doesn't make much sense at all. Logically, no one would do this. Tipping the table on its side and removing the legs if possible would make more sense. And one more example of a mistake in general. Here you can see it being misled to give wrong answers that defy common sense. The sun having one eye, for example. So in conclusion, GPT-3 can write sentences well enough to fool us humans, but it's no deeper than that. It's mindless and doesn't demonstrate much broader understanding. Then again, on the flip side, this is the very worst that this technology will ever be. In the world of AI, we could be at the 1950s of computing, where things are rudimentary and fail often, but in three years, we may be at the equivalent of 1980s computing. A year in AI time is multiple decades of regular technology progress, so we'll have to wait and see. While some news outlets might insinuate that this is the end of society and we're all doomed, it just isn't the case. So what do you guys think? I'll be interested to know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you did like this video, please feel free to share it to someone who would be interested. So thanks for watching. My name is Dagogo, and this is Cold Fusion. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you want to see anything on science, technology, business, or history, feel free to subscribe to Cold Fusion. You'll find a lot of interesting stuff here. Next week, we'll take a look at the latest on Huawei, the Chinese company stuck in between two world powers. And after that, I hope to release my documentary on Nikola Motors. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.